What's up everybody? Welcome back to the MSR Workshop. And it is the start of 2023. Boy, that year has gone by quick. And for the start of this new year, I want to bring you all along on a journey with me. We are going to be doing an unboxing of a company that I just recently partnered with, and that is a company called Monport. They make a number of CO2 lasers. Well, they have sent me this CO2 laser to do a review on, do an unboxing, and a bunch of series of videos on. So stick around. I think you guys will enjoy this. So let's get this unboxing started. Put it up high so you hopefully could see everything that I'm getting out of here. But cutting the box open, you'll notice that it is double boxed, which is nice, helps protect it in shipping. I believe this came from New Jersey. Really nice, heavy duty, thick insulation, and I'm not sure what I'll use that for. They do supply you with a pair of laser safety glasses. I'm not sure I'm going to trust them. I have a more expensive set that I use with my higher powered CO2 laser, so I'll definitely be using that. Here's a box of goodies. Some stuff, I'll set that aside and we'll go over that here in just a minute. But getting all the packing taken out. And then I'm going to grab my son here and we are going to lift this out. Now you could do this by yourself. It was a little heavy. It wasn't terrible, but definitely probably two people at least wanted to move the box out of the way. Now we are getting the plastic wrap taken off. And I was quite surprised at the finish of this thing. It seems to be a really nice powder coat job. I do like the color. It's a more intense blue than my other laser, which is a little bit lighter blue which I don't have a problem with the other one either, but I do kind of like this because it pops just a little bit more with the gray accents on it. So let's open this bad boy up and see what we've got inside. So more of that heavy duty packing. And you'll notice that the door on the top is hinged and it's spring loaded. So you actually can take it off quite easy just by moving a couple pins. Now this box here that I'm opening right now is the little pump to put down in your bucket for the water cooler for the laser tube. And it is a pretty cheap one. Um, very, very basic. So if that's something you want to upgrade, I probably would recommend upgrading it if you don't end up going with an actual chiller or at least one of those evaporative coolers, which are quite a bit less money than the actual chillers. but at least it would get you started on cooling it better than just, you know, a bucket of cold water. Now, if you look inside, you see that white tube running through. That is the tube for the chiller uh, lines that go through the laser tube. They just kind of stuffed it all inside. And then I'm going to move the gantry forward here and Kind of take a look at that. And they actually put a little piece there. What they do is they cut it on either side and then splice it together with that little orange thing, then stuff it inside. There is the tube for our smoke extractor. And seems to roll quite nicely. And what I'm doing here is I'm just gently moving it forward and backwards and I'm going to go ahead and move it left and right as well just to kind of check make sure that everything slides smoothly there's nothing blocking anything just kind of getting a feel for the way that drag chain works and in future videos we'll be going ahead and adding a air assist to this so we'll be replacing that laser head there with an upgraded one that's got the uh, air assist mount on it and it'll have a new focusing lens as well. So a quick look over the machine. You have some limit stops. Now you have a left 
limit stop. You have a case lid sensor, so the laser stops for safety when you open the case. You have a home limit stop at the back there, and then you have this little tube here which prevents you from sliding the gantry too far forward and out of the working space. Now your working space on this is around 8.5 by 11, 8 by 12, so right around the size of a full sheet of paper, maybe just a hair larger. But once we get the thing started, we will go ahead and cut something to the max capacity. Now looking over the top here, you have your amperage meter. You have two temperature displays. One is for the temperature of your laser tube, and then you have a temperature for the internal electronics. And here in just a second, I'll kind of talk about those because it's interesting and something that I don't think any of the other reviews have touched on. I'm showing you those spring-loaded latches on the doors. You just kind of pull it back and then your whole top door comes off. Also the door for the laser tube on the back comes off so it makes it nicer you're working on it you don't have to worry about it slamming shut. Now to open the back for the laser tube you do have to take up one Phillips screw and then you have easy access to your laser tube in the back. So here I'm just inspecting it. Now it's been really cold where I live in the 20s um, and below and I was worried that they had tested this at the factory and of course there's been water in it and I was praying that the thing didn't freeze because I didn't get to open this right away. Well there does look to be a little bit of condensation still left in the tube but the way I've looked over the thing I have not seen any damaged areas so when we get this thing fired up in the next video I'll definitely make sure I look for leaks and cracks in this tube. Now I didn't show it in the video but looking close at it the laser tube rating on the wattage says it's 41 watts. Now I believe this is a sold as a 40 watt laser um, only being maybe one watt over and that's max power. You're actually probably getting a little bit less power than the advertised rated power. Now I have no way to measure this but supposedly they've upgraded the glass tubes on these so they are better than what they used to be before and the manufacturer supposedly is one of the top three laser tube manufacturers out there. Let's look at the laser tube. This is the temperature probe for the laser tube. Now it is mounted on the outside of this silicone tube so I would guess probably it's going to be off by oh, three, four degrees, and that's kind of what I've gotten with my other laser, it was off a bit. Just because it's on the outside and that silicone tube does add a little bit of insulation, so you're not actually measuring the water temperature that is flowing through it in, say, a direct manner. Now there is our 110 volt plug, our ground wire, and the ground wire is something that I think is used more in foreign countries just because I don't know if all of their plugs are grounded per se, so they always include this, but I've always heard in forums that you don't normally want to use that. So to pull that uh, chiller tubing out, you actually just pull those two sections off and then it threads through the rear exhaust fan and then you have your both sections. So I went ahead and stuck both ends back together until I'm ready to hook it up to the pump just to kind of keep debris and junk from getting inside it. And then I just tucked all the wires back in here and we'll go ahead and close this side up and move back around to the front. On the front we are going to use that same Phillips screwdriver to take out a small screw located under this access door and that allows us to open it up and take a look at all the upgraded electronics. Now the electronics on these previously did not run with light burn so you had to upgrade a couple boards and you had to upgrade a couple things to make it work with light burn. This supposedly out of the box now works with light burn so I'm super excited for that. And just doing a pan shot of all the under electronics. Now it's interesting on the side that instead of being USB, it is now USB-C. So in that little bag of goodies, it does come with a USB-C cable. Now these are kind of funny. Um, 
I've seen a number of videos, people pointing to these and saying they work sometimes and they don't out of the box. They're not sure why. Well, they are battery powered. They are not connected directly to power when you plug this thing in. And they're hot glued closed. And I'm not sure why because they're running off a of battery. So you will have to go ahead and change your battery. Neither one of them were working when I got it home and I wiggled the wires a little bit and then it started working. Well, I ended up replacing the battery in this one right here. And then the LCD just popped right back on. So I had to remove the little piece of glue and pop out these two little coin cell size batteries. These are the LR44s. And ta-da, look, they both work. And there is no off button for them. So yeah, most people are probably gonna have to replace them once they get them because who knows how long they've been sitting in the box in the machine on. Now here's a little section of ductwork. Once again, let's look over our little laser safety glasses that I probably will just throw away because I don't trust them. Um, I got a pair of glasses that came with a certificate of authenticity and a certification saying for what type of laser they're used. I'll put a link in the description below where you can get those. They're a little bit pricier, but I definitely recommend them to protect your eyes. Now looking over this bag of goodies here, get a bunch of interesting stuff here. So here is our USB-C to USB cable. And I suppose it's a good thing that I they switched to USB-C. We've got a roll of double-sided tape. Not sure exactly what they included that before, but hey, that's good. A little piece of acrylic, and this is kind of a brown color to clear. Like it almost looks like what I imagine is going to be on the see-through part of the laser. I haven't pulled the plexiglass cover off. Now this here at first I wasn't sure of what it is, but it is actually a tube of lubricant for the uh, gantry so that's nice actually my big laser didn't even come with this so I will be making use of this when I do some cleaning on my other one and this one periodically just to kind of keep it working everything sliding around nicely here is our power cable nothing special about it it is grounded cable you do have your three prong ground your instruction manual and I haven't actually sat down and looked through the thing but it has some nice color pictures and it seems to be well laid out. We'll just have to kind of see when I get to sit down and look through it. A couple of the pictures did look like they were from an older machine. But hopefully they've included the new instructions for some of the new upgrades that they've done with these machines. And then it comes with a little wrench and this here is your focal depth adjustment gauge. Now there's real no way to set the focal depth on this laser because it doesn't have an adjustable bed. But hopefully in the next video or one of the videos we'll be able to kind of remedy that so we do have some adjustment because every time you put in a thicker or thinner piece of wood your focal distance is going to change a bit. So that could be a foreseeable problem. But yeah I will definitely address that in the next upcoming video. Well guys, that's it for this unboxing video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, overall, this looks like a really nice little laser. Now, obviously in the upcoming videos, we're gonna go ahead and fire this thing up, see what it can do. And then we're gonna be doing some upgrades, adding air assist, adding some possibly adjustable bed, maybe even a honeycomb bed. But if you're interested in purchasing one of these machines, I will leave a link in the description below. It helps me out and it helps the channel out. But if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, be sure and leave those in the comments below because I do check those. And stay tuned because I'm gonna be doing a bunch more videos on this. Thanks guys. Mm -hmm.